Welcome once more to Stereo 3D Plays. Everyone, I wasn't kidding when I said it. When fall rolls around, the pace is going to pick up in the Stereo 3D Productions multiverse. And now we find ourselves with new content on the main channel, new content on the sister channel, and three course corrections over the last two months. So this happens to be a game that I originally saw on Steam without knowing if it even supports UEVR Injector. I didn't know if it was Unreal Engine or Unity or whatever. I saw the trailer and I thought it looked awesome. So I was like, you know what? I gotta try me this if it's possible. So I looked up what engine it uses and I saw it was Unreal Engine and I'm like, oh shit, this is promising. Now, the game using Unreal Engine is not an immediate promise that it's going to work with UEVR Injector. There's more factors that go into play. It may still not work, but it is promising. So I visited the Flat2VR Discord and I found out over there that the game not only works with UEVR Injector, but also has a profile and some specific instructions that we're going to go over today. Full disclosure, I did run this for about 45 minutes yesterday to make an extensive test because based on the instructions, there's a few things I wanted to find out and so I wanted to do that off recording. I did record the whole thing just in case I want to show clips of it while I'm doing this video. Now the instructions that come with that profile recommend that you use a very specific nightly build of UEVR injector. And I wanted to avoid doing that, and I'll tell you why. It's because when you try to download that very specific version of UEVR Injector, you get a virus warning from your browser. It falsely trips antivirus programs. And even though I know it's a safe program, I don't want you to have to deal with that. And so I tried to make it work with the latest version of UEVR Injector. And I was misled into thinking that it had an issue with that version, but it turns out I was wrong. There is an issue, but we'll take a look at it when we get there and you'll understand what I mean. Uh, it looked really weird, but uh, down the line I figured it out. So it's going to have to do with this. You see how my right controller is rotating the view right now? This is a UEVR injector symptom of activating right hand aim. And so you're going to see this with a lot of games. For example, Borderlands 3 does this when you're in the title screen, but this is hopefully not going to happen in game. You'll see what I mean. So the first thing you want to do, this being a UEVR injector title, is obviously get the latest version of UEVR injector. Now, I know that the creators of this profile recommend getting a specific nightly build, but I do not recommend doing that for two reasons. First off, the latest version is in fact compatible with this. Look at that. You got decoupled movement with this controller oriented movement. This is beautiful. This is working exactly as intended. You do not need that nightly build. And if you do get that nightly build, it will trip your browser's download antivirus, and then it's going to trip every single antivirus in existence. So the latest version of UEVR Injector does not do that and will spare you a lot of trouble with antivirus exclusions and all that bullshit. So just go ahead and get the latest version, download the archive, there's going to be a link in the de description, extract it to a folder where, where you'll remember the location of. And the reason being is you're going to need it in like three seconds. And also, you may want to play a whole bunch of other games with UEVR Injector. So just remember where you put the files. And in that folder, there's going to be a file called uevrinjector.exe. What you want to do is you want to right click on uevrinjector.exe, go down to properties, and then when the properties windows opens, go to the compatibility tab and check the option to run this program as administrator. This is very important. You can actually do this through UEVR injector itself, but you're going to have to do it every time and it's kind of annoying. So why not take care of it in one shot right here? So hit OK, and then the next time you start uevrinjector.exe, it will prompt you for administrator rights and then run as administrator the way it should. The next step in this process is to download the official profile for this game, the official UEVR injector profile. And there's something really convenient here. Like I said earlier, this profile happens to be on a GitHub repo. So there's going to be a link in the description to a releases page of that profile. This is really convenient because if they update the profile, you're going to be getting the very latest version of it. So go ahead and download the very latest version of this profile. It's going to be a zip file. Don't extract it. All you got to do at this point is switch over to UEVR injector. And on the left side of the window, there's an import config button. 
locate the zip file we just downloaded and hit open and voila, you just imported the profile into UEVR Injector. It is set to recognize this game and run it with that profile. Now, the next thing you want to do, it's pretty damn simple, is you want to go ahead and start Pacific Drive and then switch over to the UEVR Injector window, but don't inject right away. Wait for the studio logos to play in the game window and wait for the title screen to come up and then hit inject. Do not hit inject before that as the game will not load. Now, before I proceed to playing, there's a couple of options I do want to take a look at in this menu. First off, let's set standing origin to make sure I got a good play center. This will be important, especially when you get teleported back into the car. If you're not centered, you will be off center in the car. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to input and if you're using an oculus kit this option here is terrible and it's going to be on by default right thumb rest and left joystick so we're going to change this to gesture head and left joystick see i have a habit of resting my thumb on the thumb rest uh, because that's what it's meant for and when you do that you turn your left stick into a d-pad and when you do that, your movement stops working. It is very jarring and it was extremely annoying. And it also makes your controller vibrate nonstop. It's really, really annoying. Change to gesture head plus left joystick. In which case, all you got to do to use the D-pad is left, lift your left hand to the side of your head and use your left joystick as the D-pad. While your hand is up here, you will feel a vibration from your controller to indicate to you that your left stick is presently a D-pad. And then when you take your hand back down, the vibration stops and you can just use your left stick like normal. This profile will feature right controller as the default aim method. And we're going to take a look at what happens when you get into the game. But this, I thought, was behaving incorrectly and it turns out there's something weird going on here because i was misled into reverting to the nightly build of uevr injector that the creator of the profile originally recommend and i still had the same issue and then eventually i resolved it and i'm not even sure how and then i repeated the exact same thing with this version so it turns out that we will be able to thankfully use the latest version of UEVR Injector in order to play this. One thing I did yesterday when I ran into the issue is I actually changed this option to head slash HMD, which allowed basically phase gun, as you would comically call it, where the game aims where you're looking and you're just using your controllers to press buttons. Uh, this made a lot of sense. You're going to see why in the game later. This game doesn't really need room scale controls because most of it is driving and the driving is done inside a vehicle. But I still wanted to resolve the right controller aim issue and I think I cracked it. So we're going to be taking a look at that today. We're going to go over graphics options later, but under runtime, and because this is an awful slider, I'll have to do it this way, which is super jittery. But I like to hang around 870 in this resolution scale option. I'll show you why later. We're dealing with UEVR injector, and it's going to be a bit of a fight for performance. I did find that this game does run very well when you get the settings correct, but this is part of getting those settings correct. I'm running at a very high resolution right now much higher than the headset's native resolution and so I do need to bring this down a little bit in order to adjust things. Right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the settings menu I'm gonna go to video and in video I've already done a whole bunch of tests so first off make sure to lower motion blur all the way down to zero it might be finicky. When I hit the down stick, sometimes it goes left or right and actually moves it like this. So make sure you double check your settings here. DLSS, I hate that thing. It looks like garbage. Anti-aliasing, all the methods are terrible. In fact, I did not intend on selecting FXAA there. It did it on its own. The stick control here is super sensitive. Be careful. Anti-aliasing I put on low because I'm not using any method. I do not want any anti-aliasing. View distance on high. Textures on ultra, you should have plenty of memory to deal with those. Foliage on low because it made a hell of a difference. And then this is where this gets interesting. Look at that, it actually reverted again. So shaders is another accidental reversion. 
These four things, put them all on medium. I'm running on a 4080 right now and it's doing very decent and I don't have to use any upscaling, nor do I have to go too aggressive on the resolution lowering. So this is the balance I found. Everything else is up to you. You can actually tweak a whole bunch of values here, mirror resolution scale, cascade shadow, draw distance, detail distance. There's so many little fine settings just remember to be real careful with that thumbstick because you'll often accidentally end up changing options as you're scrolling through the menu. But right now, I don't really need to... Actually, I think it did want me to apply something. So if I go right stick down, it's going to offer me to apply them. And voila, we're good to go. Wait a minute. This is really weird. The last three times I loaded this with controller aim enabled, this scene did not rotate. And now suddenly it does. I'm starting to feel like there's an actual UEVR issue here going on. This has nothing to do with the profile. UEVR, and there, now it stopped. Now it stopped doing it. What if I hit up? Okay. Oh, that's because the controller went to sleep. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, this is extremely odd. Okay, there we go. My controller went to sleep again. So this is where you run into an issue. You saw I showed you the profile has right controller aim enabled well now it's rotating the camera it's not even steering the car like borderlands 3 does it's fucking rotating the camera and i do not know for the life of me what enables or disables this now if you want to drive the car you use your left stick not your right controller um but this is absolutely god awful unplayable right now i would not be able to play like this in fact yesterday this is the point where i gave up and change the game's aim method to head HMD so that this would stop happening. Are you kidding? Uh -huh. Now that I restarted the game without reloading a save file twice, the controller is behaving correctly now. It's not rotating me in this scene and I know it's not asleep because I can see the prompt come up when I'm moving the movement stick. Well, shit. So you cannot leave a game and load another one because it's actually going to stop working correctly. Uh, this rotation only works at the first game you load. And earlier, I made another disgusting discovery. If you tab out of the game, that's it for you. You need to restart the game, otherwise your right controller will continue rotating the camera freely. As you saw me experiencing this earlier, this was all fucked up. Well, now it's gone because it's my first save load. Jeez, that was actually hard to find out. UEVR injector can get annoying, and this is why I put up doing videos like this for you because I like to give all the solutions to the problem so you guys can just get into the damn VR experience of it. All right, check this out. Moment of truth. I got the camera rotation. This is normal. It starts off like this. Even the tests I did that were successful had this issue. But let's see if it does this correctly. I'm going to hit the gas. We're going to start moving. And the camera should be taken over by the game. Yeah! And then I steer with the stick. Look at that. So the only bummer here is that you don't get the steering like in Borderlands 3, which I think is awesome, the right controller stick. But still, you, you, you get to steer with the left stick, which is super natural for a gamepad control. And I'm going to preserve the ability to point at things with my right hand when I get out of the car. So this is kind of cool. Another interesting thing is this profile seems to be sending... Uh, haptic feedback to the controller, so I kind of feel the road, which I didn't get when I played earlier and uh, when I played yesterday with the HMD orientation. So this is super interesting. I'm going to explain some of the controls later on, but I just want to go over the basics right now. Just take a look at how it's performing. We got a solid 90 for most of the part after the adjustments I made and the resolution I set. Sometimes it might dip below 90, but this is, this is good enough. I actually played for 45 minutes, like I said, and I really enjoyed the experience. Enough so that I made it a priority to make a video on this as quickly as possible. That gives you an idea of... Uh, it's a testament to how good it is. Right now I'm getting some visuals that are very similar to, believe it or not, 
dirt rally out of all things. The driving may not be as realistic. This is probably going to be some very arcadey driving, quote unquote, but it's still good enough. And having roads that look this realistic really kind of cheats me to believe that the driving mechanics are going to be just as realistic. This is a great introduction to the game, by the way. I want to tip my hat to the devs that they open uh, with this because it immediately gives you an idea of what you're going to be doing in this game. So I gotta say a downside of this D-pad shifting method is you can't steer when you use the D-pad. So when I wanna turn on the lights or the wipers, I have to lift my left hand to the side of my head and use the left or right on my stick. But the problem is when I lift my hand to the side of my head, I lose steering ability. The game doesn't let me steer anymore because my left stick becomes the, the um, D-pad. So, you, you gotta improvise, you gotta time your inputs pretty well for this to work. Uh, but right now, I remember this corner from yesterday, by the way. I, I'm not winging it that well, uh, but I've been through all this and it just looks absolutely amazing. I think this is the first moment where we're gonna get out of the car and get to uh, experience the motion controls a little bit, or uh, the pseudo motion controls, whoa. Oh, that was fucking awesome. Yesterday, I had not yet tweaked my graphics settings when I went through this and it wasn't running that well, but that was smooth as fuck. So right now when I get up, my right controller rotates my camera, but as soon as the game gives me controls back, it will stop doing that if I recall correctly. Wow. Yep, there we go. So now I have classic UEVR right hand aim, just like in Borderlands 3, and I can just walk around with a stick. This feels more or less like a room scale game. Room scale movement is not enabled, but you can walk around in the game. This will fuck up your play center, but you can still do it, which I think is very important in order for it to feel like a room scale game. So I can use my stick to sprint right now. Use A to jump. This is really, really smooth. How's the frame rate? Okay, the frame rate's not too hot here. Even with my optimized settings, I'm getting 65s here. I will be honest with you, I'm not feeling that 65. It actually feels a lot smoother than the number may suggest. Ah, oh, this is really cool. I'll show you the spot where I actually tweaked the graphics yesterday so that we can take a look at a few things together here. I'm gonna have to crouch, if I recall correctly. And do I uncrouch automatically? No, okay, there we go. Here, I'm gonna have to jump, and I'm just gonna do it. Wait, why did I stop running? Is it a toggle? Is the fucking sprint a toggle or a hold? So I'm walking, sprint. Well, I am holding it. So this is where I did my graphics optimizations. And I was trying to get as high as possible without using any upscaling. So like I mentioned a while ago, you have controller-oriented movement with this. It's fucking awesome. Uh, I'm not used to it. I don't frequently use this option, but I, I do like it so far. Hey, listen, Tobias. Yesterday, I did this section with phase gun mode. So if you ever have issues, by the way, with the right controller constantly rotating your view, and you don't want to be asked and still want to play this, just change the aim mode in UEVR injector to head oriented and this will all work like a phase gun game. But right now, first time I do this, how does this work? Do, do I get to pick up this thing? Oh, oh, okay, the, the aim is weird. I think my UI scale needs to be greatly reduced. Oh, they attach the things to the hands. Oh, that is cool. I don't remember noticing that because I did do a quick test to see if this would work. And I did not notice that aspect that actually the objects attach to your hand. Wow, that is very cool. And now I'll get to drive the car. So one thing I want to do, the UI size might be a little large. Honestly, a little too large. I'm going to reduce it a little bit because I feel like the aim is where that frame rate meter is. Yeah, it is. 
Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Okay. It's, it's also good to know, but I can see it right now. I can trace a line between my hand and the frame rate meter. So, okay. Open and get in. Holy fuck. Oh, and I'm off center too. That doesn't help. Okay. So we're going to do a very steep steering here. Get going. But wow, how amazing is this? This is room scale. The only problem is now I can't go back to the title screen and load another game. The right controller will at that point permanently continue rotating the camera. Uh, I, I have to stay in this save file and if I need to reload my game, I need to reload the entire game, do the injection process again, and then load my game. So gotta keep that in mind. It's a little annoying, but when it works correctly, damn, it actually works correctly. Something you may notice is this car is a lot shittier than the other one. Man, this is this is quite the shit box. Oh, oh, this is where. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I've been through this. Siphon fuel. So now my controller rotates, but if I hit right button, I get out of the car. There we go. So for a brief moment, my controller was rotating the camera, but it only, it only happens before you get out of the car. Once you're out of the car, everything is normal again. Um, check your trunk for a fuel can. All right, no problem. Uh, and then I just right button. Oh, I have to hold. Okay, there's a few holds and taps here. I actually got confused with that yesterday. Uh, right trigger. Okay, got it. And then I can see the percentage in my HUD. 100%. All right, so we are full. We have fully siphoned. I presume that I just have to go to the fuel cap here. Aim, right trigger, fill. Nice. Look at that. I think I forgot to hold the button yesterday. I, I only ended up putting like a part of it. Okay, so actually, my 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 fuel tank is not full. That's why. Okay, right B. Open. Whoa, whoa! I think I gotta get out of here. I think we gotta move. I've been taking too much time. So obviously, if when you get back in the car, you keep finding yourself way off center. It's because you need to reset your standing origin, which I've been doing a lot already during this playthrough. Highly recommend doing it as often as possible. But here we go. We got a full frame rate again. This is running nice. Looking great, enjoyable. What we should be looking at is how fast this preacher seems to be moving. Whoa, drifting mechanics. Those are so cool. Those are so cool. The driving is so natural. Do, do, oh yeah, I go through that. I go through that. That's that's intended for ramage. And this is where I got to yesterday, where you have to enter the building, and your wheel falls off. And of course, you end up conveniently at a fucking auto shop. So, find a way into the building. Do I... How, how the fuck do I get out of here? It's not my, my thing is still doing this. What the hell? So this is really janky. When you finish your drive and you want to get out of the car, that rotation is so fucking janky. Wow, the lighting, man. This looks fucking good. Okay, flip the breaker switch. So, here we go. Oh, cool. Whoa. Okay, so, we gotta talk about the garage. The garage is the worst performing area in the game so far. As you're gonna see, I dropped below 70 in here. It's the lowest I've went. It is not optimal. Uh, but again, it does not feel like it's struggling. And the asynchronous time warp is really compensating. So at least there's that. At least we're, we got a fully smooth experience as far as the player is concerned. Gotta hold it. 
Oh yeah, this. Another breach, huh? How do you outsiders not understand that Arda didn't build that 300 meter wall out there for fun? Unless you're one of the unfortunates who got zapped through. Wait. So you might as well start by fixing up that car. Just don't break anything in my shop with those soft hands of yours. Oh, I have to hold again. Damn it. Okay, I kind of jumped a step there. I didn't know I had to use the health thing. Yesterday I used it reflexively. I didn't even follow the game's instructions. I just wanted to see if it worked. But now I gotta do this. And here's what's cool. Now I'm given the game's full heads-up display. And if I recall correctly, I'll be able to open a bunch of features like the map and everything using the system button. Which is why, by the way, today I'm using AirLink and not Virtual Desktop. Because this was going to get annoying having to walk to the keyboard very often. Or maybe I could use my uh, Bluetooth numpad. Maybe one day I will so that I can use virtual desktop with this. Uh, but for now, AirLink will do. Uh, in fact, very often with UEVR injector, AirLink will actually be the go-to uh, interface because of this known issue. So now I have to drive the car into the auto shop. Shouldn't be too complicated. I like that when you go in reverse in this game, unlike in Borderlands, it doesn't invert the direction. It actually works just like a car. So long press still opens the game menu. And then a really long press opens this. So now I need to go to... Wait a minute. So blueprints, inventory... Wait a minute. What is this? Oh, I'm going left. And it's indicating to me where to go. I got it. So I'm using the grip buttons to change categories here. I go to blueprints. It wants me to go to crude door. And then pin to checklist. What is this? I just had to press Y. Okay, I don't know why it had a clipboard there. Hell 30 impact resist zero. So is this because I'm missing a door on my thing? I think this is because I'm missing a door on my thing. So now, what do I have to do? Okay, it's on my to-do, so I have to do the to-do. There's a box of scraps here somewhere. Is it, is, is this here? No, it's actually out there. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. And then you hold that, you pick up the pry bar, and then I think I press this to close. Okay, now I have to equip the goddamn pry bar. So I long press this and it brings up the fucking game menu. Now it does this. So I go here, I press, what is it? Assign quick slot. And I th think that's it. Aha, it's a hold again. You bastards. Okay, cool. Uh, actually, let's do that. Yep. The fuck do I use this? All right, I have to hold it, hold it, and voila! Wow, that wasn't too bad at all. Oh, I think it wanted to... Right button. Ah. Okay, do I take everything? I, I presume I have to take everything. What is this? Oh, is that from the dumpster? A scrapper. What the fuck is going on? Well, there's going to be a lot of shit. So gather items from the abandoned car behind the garage for your checklist. And the subtask happens to be with the scrapper, which got auto-equipped. Okay. This is super interesting. So the car's wheels, panels, and doors. Okay. Nice. So then I can grab the shards, I guess. And uh, I get it. All right. I understand. My dad had a car dealership and he taught me something really important about cars. When you destroy, uh, you scrap a door or a car, uh, a car door or a car wheel, you will actually be rewarded with a piece of uh, a roll of duct tape. 
Now, basically, a roll of duct tape will pop out of the item you're destroying. My dad was like, it's always super important to scrap um, hoods, doors, hatches, just so you can go and get duct tape out of them. And is this where I install it? Uh, or, oh, there we go. I'm still getting the hang of when you're supposed to hit the grip button or the trigger and when you're supposed to tap or hold. Wow. Do I have to... Oh, yeah. I gotta hold. Wait. Yep. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. Mm. Oh, that's all I have to do. It's filling. So all you have to do is hold right trigger. Once the cap opens, it's auto-filling. So if you want to do the gesture of putting it up to the car, it's up to you. You don't have to do that. Oh, that projector. has lost the ability to hold a constant physical state. What that means is the shape, size, and makeup of just about everything constantly changes. Is that done? Is that done? It's a hold again. Follow the access road. Okay. Okay. Finally. Finally. So. Oh, wow. This is going to be so cool. I wonder if we're going that direction or away. Let's see. I think this is going to be really cool. So first, I want to see where... Okay, so it's going to be a left. Unless this thing is crazy as fuck, it will be a left. Yep, okay, we're good. Oh, I even have a fucking huge-ass objective marker in my face. Okay, this is interesting. Oh, I see what it did. You mean one of these? The arc device is picking up on some plasma generators nearby. Your headset has a built-in scanner. Use it on the plasma generator and it'll take it out the tools you need. Alright. Oh, right, it's right, Crypt. Jesus. Impact. Oh, I don't have one of those. What the f- Oh, oh! I see what you're doing, game. That's clever. Shitter. Okay, this is gonna be something. Taking the fucking everything out of here. Fabric. Uh, I see what you're doing, game. I see what you guys are doing. And by low priority, I mean just about nice. everything that comes out of mouth. Oh. Oh, shit. This is a pretty big device, man. And it's... Nice. Plasma! Is there more? One of five, what? Smash plasma gener- Oh, there's a- wait, what? What? Mind blown. Wait, was this one already smashed? Y'all worrying me. Yeah, means of... 
Are you kidding? Just fucking steal across the fucking. I like that. Is that that works? That'll work. Oh, oh, can I get to that one though? I was able to get to that. There doesn't seem to be any way through that right now. Maybe use the car? Oh. Oh, y'all didn't tell me that. Oh, you bastards. Ah, uh, come on. Let's get back on the road. I don't think we'll have too much to do. That can be safe. Pretend like I don't see it. I'm gonna pass this thing. It's attacking me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. This is the, my location is bad. These are fucking trying to electrocute me. And then I have those things over there. Okay, so this is going to be super dangerous. I got it, I got it. All right, go, 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 go. Oh, shit. Fucking bitch. Oh, it does a full cycle if I hold it. Okay, cool. Oh, it kills it! I forgot about that. When you get the fucking generator offline, it fucking kills the tower. How's my... Oh! So... I didn't get much feedback for that. I thought I would have taken... What? I thought I would have taken minor damage only. Come on! Okay, good, 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 good. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, that was cool. You're near one of the old gorilla radio stations. That ought to be prime pickings for antenna parts. I've loaded its approximate location to your map. Look for an antenna tower uh, up on a hill somewhere. Really, lady? Really? Every time you get back in the car, by the way, it might be a little confusing to you. It kind of relocates you. But that's the moment where the controller start, stops rotating your view. So it's a really, really good thing. And by the way, sometimes the terrain is a bit rough in this game. And it will shake you in a really, really uncomfortable way. It is not a consistent problem, but it's, it's there nonetheless. So right now, I'm going in the correct direction. Locate the radio station. And just do your thing. Okay, let's try to go for a quick drive here. I, I've been doing too much shit. I kind of miss the driving. I, I think this game's best aspect is the driving. And I kind of want to get back to a little bit of it. So I'm going to ignore some of the beautiful destinations we can check out here. And all these plasma generators and the cool jazz that we can access. I just want to get to the objective and I'd probably call it a part and yes, a part. This is not a Let's Play series. This is very much a B-roll, by the way. I'm going to do a bunch of them. We're going to decide if we finish the game after I've done the research. But what I want to do is just get UEVR working as best as possible. If you load or quit without saving, you will resume at the beginning of this level, which is fair. By default, the abandon save quit option does this. You'll abandon your trip, lose your collected items, return to the garage, save and quit to the menu. Before you abandon say quit, would you like to reduce the penalty and keep all collected items? You can change this at any time in the settings menu. Current penalty, lose most items. Wait, why is this a choice? I don't get it. Is there a catch somewhere? You're just offering me, do you want to lose your items or not? I don't get it. 
Okay, well now I know what the situation with the saves is. I know that these things aren't going to start chasing my car, but before we go today, I do want to go take a look at this thing. And maybe we die in the process! We die- Whoa! Oh god! Oh shit! What are you fucking doing? Holy shit! Can I attack this thing? Oh my god! It just fucking threw me! It carried me up and threw me! And I lost like 9% health. That is super interesting. I really like that attack mechanic. I, I'm gonna get annoyed when it ruins my entire uh, progress one day. But that's a cool enemy. I fucking love that. Well, next time I get in here, we'll be through most of the thick of the bullshit. We'll only have small things to deal with. For example, I'd like to see if I can fully resolve the rotation. Because right now, if I were to do this, and actually not this, but this, and go to the main menu and load another game, I would completely lose my ability to use this mode because my right controller would constantly rotate my camera. It would be absolutely unplayable. Let's see if we can fix that. Let's see if we can improve the performance over time. I would like to check more ways of doing it all while absolutely avoiding DLSS. DLSS is fucking shit. And this game was a reminder that DLSS is fucking shit. Look, I'd rather have lower resolution with jagged edges than lower resolution and fucking blurriness. This was amazing. It's a great start. I will be back to this probably in December where I'll continue the research. But right now, of course, for stereo 3D plays, I will stop altering course constantly. We're going back to Fallout 4 VR because it has been beckoning. And the only reason it got pushed aside is because other things beckoned a little more. But now that I've pretty much analyzed this case, I like it. I want to cover it. We're going to be back to it. I'm going to put it aside for now. I'm very, very satisfied. If you follow the instructions I gave in this video, you should be on your merry way to playing Pacific Drive in VR, leaving you with the only challenge of adjusting the game so that it performs well. Something that, as you can see, I struggle with too. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching Stereo 3D Plays all the way through with this lovely Pacific Drive B-roll using UEVR injector. Let's go through some video effects here. When you enter dangerous places, your health starts going down and you get this VHS effect. It actually works in stereo. It's fucking amazing. But yeah, that's it. This was very, very unique. I don't think I've ever played something quite like this before. I mean, I have played games where you dodge obstacles, but this is a whole nother bar ball game, and we will need to dig deeper into the puzzle. That is specific drive. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Yo. I'm getting goosebumps now. I'm getting goosebumps now. Those are what I think they are. There's bodies. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I hear something too. This gave me goosebumps. Tourist. Bro. There. Those aren't tourists. Those are... What the fuck?